Good evening, my name is Michael Martell, and today we are going to be diving deep into a brand called Farfetch. Why they're so amazing, what they do, why they're innovative, and why they're still here today as one of the top leading luxury e-commerce brands in the world. So just some background on Farfetch, they are an LTD publicly traded company. They create sustainable luxury and fashion from a website and they are here to exist for the love of fashion. Farfetch wants people to know that they're not here for the hype, but they're here to bring good fashion into the world to give the consumer a happy and great response and uh, just experience buying from them. So just some of their marketing objectives, they bridge the gap between luxury and e-commerce by giving um, fashionistas and people that just love fashion every day to buy exclusive stuff from brands that are typically really hard to get. Uh, we're talking about brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton. They typically only have a couple brick and mortar stores around the world. This means that someone that wants to buy from them is typically, it's going to take a lot to uh, buy from this brand, but with companies like Farfetch, we're able to do that in a much easier way. They have an interesting customer segment and target market. Their target market is young men to women that typically spend an average of five and a half to six and a half hundred dollars per order. Their customer segment is fashion enthusiasts, busy people, but specifically influencers. So they target influencers and that's how they target their target audience today. Their target audience are reliable customers, consistent customers to create a consistent target market. They typically look for young people, specifically Gen Z. They know that Gen Z people love fast, sustainable, and uh, quick buys. People like me, young people, we love when things are easy. We love when things go quick, and we love when we get what we want as fast as we can. That's why Farfetch is here. Farfetch allows uh, customers to get what they want in a quick amount of time without having to worry about what's happening to the product. Um, on the next slide of company positioning, you can see that there's a graph here that shows the top 20 European marketplaces across all of Europe. Um, this was back in 2017, but as you can see on the graph, this was when Farfetch was four. Now it looks like they're number two, just under the leading brand there. But that is basically because the rapid distribution systems. Farfetch can get a lot of product out in a little amount of time. And personally, I believe that that is the main reason why they have gotten so big today is because the amount of time they're able to ship the product out in and um, how quickly they do it. This is due to effective monetization and a very impressive technology system. So on the next slide, let's see a consumer behavior uh, buying model that shows how they use all their data um, to market out their product and their brand to the specific people they want. This in hand drives sales and it allows more inventory for them. So for Farfetch, they get brands um, into their inventory and they sell other brands. They don't have a specific clothing brand. So this helps them get more inventory and then in return, they acquire more customers. So as you can see on the next page, we um, I specifically took a screenshot of their uh, website. You can see how it's super simple. Their product mix in line goes from shoes to sneakers to bags, to accessories, watches, and even homeware. And of course they have clothing from everything to shirts to pants to socks. So they offer literally everything. And not only do they just offer literally almost everything, they also offer reasonably priced brands compared to their other expensive ones like Hermes or Louis Vuitton. This means that, uh, you're a kid in their target market, Gen Z, you're 21 years old like me, you wanna buy a nice pair of Vans that was like an exclusive colorway. Um, it was only $20 more than the original price of the shoe, but it's sold out everywhere. Luckily, that's where Farfetch comes into play. You're able to um, obtain a product mix um, from their website because they have an extensive product mix. They got all these products, and then they also have lines of that product with different colorways and such. Um, that plays into their service processes. They have a very complicated but um, simple service. They have fast delivery, cheap, reliable shipping. Um, they have ca cautious workers. You'll see in the next slide that they have about 5,000 warehouse workers. Um, and they, yeah, they distribute from warehouses, which is where they keep all their product. So when you buy a product, 
from Farfetch, it's probably technically already at their warehouse, which is good because you know it's in a safe place and you know that it's gonna be reliable. So they have a successful backend tech system, which is why um, their product goes out so quickly and that's why they're able to store their product once they get it from the company because the company knows that they're so successful, that product's gonna get sold. Um, so they partner with other companies such as Louis Vuitton or Hermes to um, obtain products from and then sell it as a, uh, like a middleman essentially. Their customer service is also extremely reliable, so that is why they've built a target market that consistently comes back. Because like I said earlier, young people like me love help, quick, and just consistency. That's what Farfetch does, that's why they're so popular today. Like I said earlier, they have 5,000 trained employees working, protected shipping, and also handle with care shipping. So you know your products um, always getting handled the way you probably wanted to. If you're buying something like Louis Vuitton, you know, a thousand dollar bag or something, you know that they're handling it with as much care as possible because they know how important that is to you, to the bank. It's a lot of money. So yeah, their profit sales are oriented. They charge brands about 25% of the selling price. And they make about most of their profit, about 70% from the sales commission specifically, which in return goes to about 49.7 gross profit uh, percent, which is really good if you look in uh, competing terms for other brands that are also doing the same thing. Um, just a quick example of their current pricing strategies. They do median based pricing, which means that one brand selling the same product here, one brand selling the same product right here but they go in the middle to maximize their profit and also to maximize the amount of customers that are buying from them. Um, if they went down here, they wouldn't make enough money. And if they went up here, they wouldn't get enough customers. So they need it at the middle um, to create basically the most amount of uh, customer satisfaction possible. This is what I've noticed a lot of other brands do. Um, just kind of give the customer more of the, the fairest price basically while they're still uh, making money. Because as a business, you're in business to make money. You have to make money somehow. Luckily, Farfetch does that without uh, stealing from their consumers. So yes, good pricing tactics. They have leveled out sales and they also have a clear insight on their website, which is, uh, it's brilliant because things can get expensive when you're looking at a uh, luxury e-commerce. So, you know, you could get something that's $300, $200 off from its original price of 600. That's also another thing that Fairfetch does to kind of uh, if, uh, like build on its target market. So when you look into the place promotion and pricing strategies, you'll see that they have a hybrid distribution channel because they are the middleman and what we call kind of the service line. They get the product and then they sell it. As you can see, they deal with fair pricing, superior goals, and uh, obviously legal procedure because they're looking to last. They don't want to do something that's going to, I don't know, put them in the eyes of the government. Uh, Farfetch is fair. It's in their line. So they do unfortunately have possible channel conflict. Just from what I've researched, it's not 100%. But based on everything that I've looked at, I've noticed that they have multi-channel conflict, which essentially means they have all these channels going because they don't distribute the product um, themselves, as in they're not Louis Vuitton. They get the Louis Vuitton and then sell it. This means that there could be plenty of obstacles in the way regarding the company that they're buying from slash the consumer that's getting the product. But luckily, because their marketing is so effective and their backend tech kit system is so good, they're able to usually figure this out and rewire the multi-channel as they can, as they go as well. So Farfetch does a lot of interesting promotion strategies. They've had a few ad commercials that you may have seen. They do mostly internet ads, which is where they sell their data and then gain more data. As you'll see, like you're on like a website, you'll see like ads in the corners of the screens. That's what Farfetch specifically does because they know that their word has already been out there for a good amount of time. So as you can see, that is an ad. It says unfollow for fashion lovers, not followers, which to me is simple, but simple in a very complicated, good way. So for some strategy suggestions, um, I kind of uh, studied and saw that 
cognitive structure research can help them build more um, reliability with their customers. Uh, that way they can get as much product as they can while um, basically studying what their target audience wants by uh, data. So in conclusion, Farfetch is a hunger for innovation. They have strong network effects and they basically make a lot of their sales through influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is how Farfetch has gotten into such a big brand that it is today. The brand is there to stay, it's not going anywhere, and it's why I wanted to kind of look into researching it. Because it's just such a innovative brand and it made me wonder, why are they so big today? Well, that reason is because they are for the future. They are here to make Gen Z realize that fast fashion can also be sustainable fashion. And then that fashion can be in your hands as soon as you want it to be with their fast shipping. Well, thank you for letting me present to you guys today. I hope you got a quick little view of Farfetch and just how beautiful they are as a company. I really enjoyed them personally. I'm a customer from them and yeah, see you guys next time.